Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'll be showing you how to replace your wheel bearings on your Honda dirt bike. Checking the condition of your bearings should be a part of your regular maintenance routine. Unfortunately, this is something that often gets overlooked. In this video, we'll be focusing on the wheel bearings of your bike and we'll show you how to inspect and replace them. Now we have a how-to video for pretty much any bearing on your bike. So if you need any other service work on your bearings, go ahead and check that out. And we're working on an 05 CRF 450R, but this procedure will be similar for a lot of 125, 250, 450, and even some 500 models from Honda. So be sure to check out your service manual and go ahead and get your bike on the stand and we'll get started. For parts, we're using the Tusk wheel bearing and seal kits. Now these kits are a great inexpensive option for your machine and they come individually for the rear wheel and front wheel. You can also get the seals separately if you're just needing to do the seals, but the wheel kits actually come with all the parts you need to repair one wheel. Now we'll also need some grease and contact cleaner. To do this job, you'll need some basic hand tools, a heat gun, rags and safety glasses. We're using our Tusk bearing remover, or you could use a hammer and punch. We're also using a Tusk Honda bearing retaining tool and a bearing driver. To check the bearings on your bike, normally you'll still have the wheel on the bike. Now, we already have our wheel off, so we're using our balancing and truing stand from Tusk just to show you how to do this. And you'll wanna check the radial and lateral play, as well as rotate the wheel and check for any weird noises coming from the bearings. So how you'll do that, you'll put one hand on top and bottom of the tire and you'll rock it side to side and check for any lateral play. And then you'll move it up and down and that's your radial play. See if you have any in there. If you're having a hard time feeling any of this, you can have an assistant hold the brakes and that way you can get a better feel on it. The next thing you'll do, you can rotate the wheel and check for any abnormal noises coming from the bearings. If, you, if all you hear is the rotor turning, you can also press the caliper in a little bit to get the pads away from the rotor and then try it again. Now, we've already determined that our bearings need replacement, so we are going to go ahead and do that. But if you haven't removed your wheel from the bike yet, go ahead and do that and bring it to the bench. The next thing we'll need to do is remove our wheel spacers. Next, we'll remove the seal using either a large flat blade screwdriver, a seal puller, but we actually opted to use the tire iron. When you pry this seal out, it's a good idea to have a rag protecting the soft aluminum surface. Okay, now we'll flip the tire over, and when we do this, we don't want to set our rotor on the ground. So we'll be using some wooden blocks to hold the tire up and that way it protects our rotor. Next, we'll need to remove our bearing retainer from the wheel. To do that, we'll use our Tusk Honda bearing retainer tool. After that, we'll remove any grease or oil from the hub. Now we're ready to remove the bearings. To do this, there are a couple different options. You can use a hammer and a punch and maybe a heat gun to heat this hub up to make the bearings come out easier. But we've chosen to use our Tusk bearing removal tool because it makes the job a lot easier. To use the Tusk bearing removal tool, we'll just select the correct size collet and We'll install it into our wheel bearing and press down and we'll pull up until the lip catches. And then we'll use some wrenches to tighten the tool down. With the collet tight in the wheel bearing, we'll now heat up the hub a little bit with our heat gun to help the bearing come out easier. Now we'll take the slide hammer from our bearing removal kit and insert it into the collet. Use the slide hammer to remove the bearing. With the bearing out, we'll remove the spacer. Next, we'll flip the wheel over 
And keep in mind that this side has two bearings inserted into it. So we'll try to remove both bearings at the same time. We'll repeat the same procedures that we did on the other side. With the bearings removed, we'll clean the hub up and check it for any damage. If you didn't use the bearing removal tool, you'll want to make sure that the spacer wasn't damaged on the ends while you were driving the bearings out. We'll also clean up the bearing retainer. We'll start the installation process with the right side bearing. To do that, you'll look at one of the bearings that came in the kit and both sides are sealed. So we'll be installing this with the manufacturer's markings facing out. If you don't know what the manufacturer's marking is, it's just some numbers and some letters on the outer race of the bearing. To drive the bearing in, we'll use our Tusk bearing driver. To get the right bearing driver, you'll use one that is slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the outer race. You never want to hammer on this inner race because it could damage the bearing. To help install the bearing, we'll heat the hub up a little bit with the heat gun and apply a little bit of grease to our outer race on our bearing. Before you start driving the bearing in, make sure it sits squarely against the bore and stays square throughout the driving process. We'll move the wooden blocks on the back side of our hub to support it while we drive the new bearing in. Next, we'll flip the wheel over, insert our spacer, and then we'll drive one bearing on top of the other. We'll flip the wheel over. We'll install our bearing retainer and torque it to 33 foot-pounds. To verify that our bearings are all the way seated, we'll rotate one bearing and it should barely turn the bearing on the other side. And that's because the collar in between is holding them apart and it should just barely have enough friction to turn the other bearing. The bearings should feel smooth and not rough in any way. Next, we'll take our new seals and we'll put grease on the inner lip as well as the outside diameter to help it install easier. And we'll take our bearing and seal driver and press it in. Then we can take our wheel spacers, we'll clean them up and then install them. Keep in mind that this seal is directional and we'll have this flat side facing out and the side that you can see the spring on will be facing towards the bearing. If your collar has any grooving in it, you're gonna to wanna to replace it because it won't allow the seal to keep water and dirt out. Now we got our wheel spacer all cleaned up and we noticed we've got a lot of grooving in it and we wanna keep these new bearings in the best possible condition that we can. So we decided to replace them with some Tusk anodized ones. Next, we'll do the same thing to the front wheel. The difference is that we only have two bearings and no bearing retainer. First, we'll remove our wheel spacers. Then we'll take out the seals. Heat up the hub. Take our Tusk bearing removal tool and remove both bearings and the spacer in between. Then we'll clean up the hub. With the hub clean, we'll install one of the bearings. If a bearing driver is not available, you can use a socket instead. Install the spacer. Then we'll install both seals. After that, we'll take our wheel spacers and put them back on the wheel. And that's all there is to replacing your wheel bearings. This bearing kit, as well as some of the special tools we've used in this job, are available on our website. So be sure to check that out. And we also have just about anything you'd want for your bike. 
If you like this video and want to see more like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.